the bell icon to turn on notifications. In this section of the course, we're going to start taking a look at some of the most useful intermediate level functions and formulas in Excel. And the idea behind this section is really to give you a taster of the types of things that you can do with more advanced formulas to move your knowledge on a little bit from those basic formulas that we looked at earlier in the course and really set you up for success if you plan to do the Excel Intermediate course. And we're going to start out this section by taking a look at one of the most popular functions, and that is the VLOOKUP function. Now VLOOKUP is classified as a lookup and reference formula in Excel. And if we jump across to the formulas ribbon, you're going to find it underneath the lookup and reference section all the way down at the bottom. There it is, VLOOKUP. Now, if we take a look at this screen tip, because this is going to tell us exactly what VLOOKUP does. So it's going to look for a value in the leftmost column of a table, and then it returns a value in the same row from a column you specify. So what exactly does that mean in terms of data? Well, let's take a look at the example that we're going to use. Now, in this worksheet, I have a reasonably large data set, and this is related to movies. So in column A, we have the title of the movie. In column B, we have the year that it was released. In column C, we have the certificate it's been assigned. In column D, the date that it was released. In column E, we have the runtime or the duration of the movie. In column F, we have the genre that that movie belongs to. And then finally, in column G, we have the user rating. And what we want to be able to do here is we want to be able to type in the name of a film and have it return the year, the certificate, the genre and the rating from the table. And it's this kind of situation where we would use the VLOOKUP function. Now, the thing that a VLOOKUP relies on is a lookup value. So whatever it is that you're using to look up this information, in this case, the film name that we have in J2, that must exist in the table. So let's pull back the year using the VLOOKUP function. Now I'm going to type equals into the cell and then we're going to start to type VLOOKUP. Notice it's come up in IntelliSense, so I can just press the tab key. Now let's take a look at the different arguments. Remember, the arguments are what we need to complete in order for this formula to work. Now, the first thing that this formula requires is the lookup value. So this is the piece of information that you're using to look up other pieces of information in the table. So for us, the lookup value is going to be the film. So whatever we have in cell J2. Now, remember, this can change. I can type in all different kinds of movie names in here. But regardless of what I type in, because we're using a cell reference, it's always going to look up based on the value in cell J2, comma, to move on to the next argument. We then need to provide the table array. So effectively, this argument is asking us, where is our data? What are we looking up this information in? Well, for us, our table array is this data over here. So I'm going to select the entire table. Now let's jump up to the formula bar to carry on editing, comma. Now it's asking us for the column index number. And this is a really important part of VLOOKUP. The column index number is where you specify the column of information you want to return. So what are we looking up here? What is the result that we're expecting? Well, we're trying to return the year of the film Moonlight. So we want to return the year. Now VLOOKUP numbers columns from left to right. So the title column is column one, the year column, column two, certificate column, column three, so on and so forth. So our third argument here is going to be two because the year is column two in our table array, comma. Now, our final argument here is an optional argument. How do I know it's an optional argument? Well, if I take a look at the argument, you can see that it has square brackets around it. 
Now, any argument that you see in square brackets means that it's optional. So you don't have to input anything for this. But if I do press comma, you can see the arguments that we have, true or false. So what am I doing here? Am I doing an exact match or an approximate match? And this is related to the lookup value, the film that we're using to look up the data. Well, I want to exactly match the name Moonlight in the table. So this argument is going to be false. And I would say that the false argument on the end of a VLOOKUP is the most common argument. Now, if you don't put anything on the end here, remember this is optional, it's going to do the default, which is to do a false. So I'm just going to type false on the end and close off my bracket. That is my VLOOKUP formula. Let's hit enter and see if this works. There we go. So it's pulled back the year 2016. So if we look for moonlight in the table, and it's this one just here, you can see that yes, the year that that movie was released was 2016. So we've used the film name as the lookup value in this table, and we've returned column two, which is the year. Let's do this again. Equals VLOOKUP, tab key. Lookup value again is what we have in J2. The table array is the same thing, so I'm gonna control shift down to select everything. Let's click back up in the formula bar, comma. The next thing we need here is the column index number. So what piece of information do we want to return this time? We want to return the certificate. So counting from left to right, the certificate column is column number three. And we want to do an exact match of the movie name in the table. So our final argument here is going to be false. But also remember, in Excel, you can type a zero to represent false and a one to represent true. So I could put a zero on the end here or leave it blank. Close the bracket, hit enter. Certificate is R. Let's double check that. Yes, it is. Now, one way I could make this a little bit easier on myself so that I'm not having to go in and select this cell range each time for the table array is to turn this data into a table or a named range. So I'm going to create a table. Control T. Click on OK. Now my data is in a table and on the table design ribbon, I'm going to give my table a name. So let's just call this movies and hit enter. Now that I have this table array named, I can use it in my VLOOKUP calculation. So this time we're going to pull back the genre. And I can see that the genre is column number one, two, three, four, five, column number six. So equals VLOOKUP. The lookup value is the movie. The table array, this time I can use the table name. So if I start to type it in, notice it comes up underneath in IntelliSense, tab to select, comma, the column index number, I'm looking for the genre which we've established is column number six, and I want to do an exact match, so I'm just gonna accept the default here. I'm not even gonna add that final argument. Hit enter. And yes, that movie is in the genre of drama. And just to show you another way that you can do this, you could also utilize the functions dialog box. So if we go up to the formulas tab and click on insert function, I'm going to search for VLOOKUP. Let's click on go, double click to select. And now I can complete my arguments in this way. So the lookup value is J2. The table array is movies. The column index number, well this time we want to return the rating, which is column number seven, and we want to do an exact match, so we need a false argument on the end there. Let's click on OK, and there we go, 7.5. So now what this means is that every time I change the film or type a new film into here, all of these results are going to update. So if I type in Jackie and hit enter, you can see that those results have changed to reflect this movie in the table. What about if I type in, let's go for La La Land, 
hit enter. Again, at the top, those results have now changed. So that is how you do a basic VLOOKUP using exact matching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.